Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Mia Sloth 99. Thanks for the suggestion, Mia. You asked, how is silver made? At first glance, silver seems like it just magically appears in rings, necklaces, and grandma's fancy cutlery that no one's allowed to use. But silver doesn't start life polished and pretty. It begins deep underground, mixed in with rocks, minerals, and a whole lot of dirt. Today, we're digging into the sparkly, messy journey of silver, right here on Explaining Everything. If you think silver is born shiny, think again. In nature, it looks more like dull gray lumps glued to rocks than anything you'd want on a bracelet. Sometimes it even hides inside other minerals, like copper, lead, or zinc. Basically, silver is like the introvert of metals. It rarely shows up alone at the party. So, how do people actually get it out of the ground? Mining. Big, loud, dusty mining. Silver can be found in veins, thin streaks of shiny stuff running through rock or spread out in giant ore deposits. Imagine playing Where's Waldo? But instead of Waldo, you're squinting for sparkly specks while operating heavy machinery. Miners dig, blast, and haul tons of rock just to find tiny bits of silver mixed inside. To put it into perspective, sometimes you need to crush over a ton of ore just to get a few ounces of silver. Talk about stingy. It's like silver is the friend who shows up to a potluck with one chip and says, Hey guys, I contributed. Once the ore is pulled out of the ground, it doesn't immediately look valuable. It looks like gravel. So the next step is to crush it into smaller and smaller pieces until it's basically powdered rock. Think of it like making a protein shake, but instead of bananas and milk, it's rocks and more rocks. This powdered ore gets mixed with water and chemicals to create a slurry, a fancy word for metal soup. Here's where it gets a little sciency. Using processes like flotation, air bubbles are pumped into the slurry. The silver and other valuable metals attach to the bubbles and float to the top, while the useless stuff sinks. It's basically a bubble bath for rocks, except instead of rubber ducks, you're harvesting valuable metals. This is how silver gets concentrated. Imagine separating chocolate chips from cookie dough, except instead of a snack, you end up with piles of shiny concentrate ready for smelting. Now comes the dramatic part, smelting. This is where miners take that silver concentrate and heat it to absurd temperatures in furnaces hotter than your laptop when it has 87 chrome tabs open. First, they burn away impurities. Other metals like lead or copper get separated out. This step is kind of like peeling an onion except the onion is glowing at 1,200 degrees Celsius and might poison you if you breathe wrong. One classic method is called the Parks process, where zinc is mixed with the melted ore. Silver has a crush on zinc and clings to it, while lead says, fine, I'll be alone. Then the silver-zinc mixture is skimmed off the top and heated again to get rid of the zinc leaving behind shiny, almost pure silver. There's also electrolytic refining, where an electric current is used to zap the silver into purity. Basically, you dunk chunks of impure silver into an electrolyte bath, run electricity through it, and the silver ions migrate to a nice clean plate. 
leaving the junk behind. It's like Silver's version of a spa retreat. It goes in stressed and grimy and comes out glowing and refreshed. At this point, the silver is finally pure, usually about 99.9% .9 pure, which is shinier than most people's New Year's resolutions. But what do you do with it? First, it's poured into molds to create silver bars or ingots. These look like something pirates would bury on a beach, and honestly, they're not far off. From there, those bars can be melted down again and rolled pressed or shaped into whatever people want. Coins? Yep. Wires? Sure. Giant spoons for display cases no one uses? Absolutely. But the important part of this story is the transformation. Silver has gone from being a stubborn speck in a rock to bubbling in a weird frothy soup to glowing in a furnace and finally into something people actually recognize as valuable. It's a glow-up so dramatic, it makes makeover shows look lazy. Silver's journey is a mix of dirt, fire, and clever science. What starts as a gray lump hidden underground ends as a dazzling metal polished to perfection. It's kind of poetic, like the idea that beauty takes work. Except in this case, the work involves explosives, bubbling sludge, and molten lava-level heat. Next time you see a silver ring, remember, it started its life as a reluctant little mineral trapped in a rock, and it went through the equivalent of a reality show obstacle course just to sit on your finger. If that isn't dedication, I don't know what is. If you enjoyed learning how silver is made, don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe keep some in the future for vampires. Just in case. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.